In this screencast, we're going to practice the directional derivative. So let's focus on a standard problem. We're given a function, in this case of three variables, x, y, z, simple function, and you're asked to find the directional derivative of f in this direction. That's a unit vector. I want to comment a little bit on that. Uh, at the point 1, 3, 0. So a very standard question that you should be able to do. Let's start doing it. So the directional derivative of f in the direction u at the point 1, 3, 0, we know will be given by, we work this out, the gradient of f at this point dotted in to this unit vector. Let me just emphasize this point for a moment. This is a unit vector. I'll let you verify that the norm of this vector is in fact 1. And I just want to emphasize a point, which is that if you go and look on the web, you'll find that there are a couple possible definitions of the directional derivative, where the difference all concerns what to do when this vector is not a unit vector. And let me just indicate those here. I will use a vector v, just as different from u, and its norm will not be equal to 1. And so the question arises, what do you want to define this to be? Should it just be this, where it doesn't make any difference whether v is a unit vector or not? Or should it be what you get when you normalize this so that it is a unit vector, right? So should you use v itself, or should you use v when normalized to be a unit vector? And that is the, the question, and different authors, different people have different opinions about this. I choose to simply avoid this issue in geometry in motion by just always taking this to be a unit vector. So we will just only consider the case where this is a unit vector, and then this question doesn't arise, and I'll let you worry in the future about which of those two cases to choose between. Then the other thing I want to just say is that if you're asked, if this is the problem statement, then the way you want to solve the problem is by working out this dot product between the gradient vector and the unit vector u. You do not want to use the definition of du f at some point x is equal to this limit unless you're asked specifically to compute the directional derivative by taking this limit, by forming these functions and taking this limit, you do not want to do this. This is much more laborious than simply computing the directional derivative this way. So I simply, I wanted to make these two points and just emphasize that. With that in mind, let's now continue our solution to the problem. It's rather easy. We need the gradient. We'll work it out in general. So we have to take the derivatives. We will get differentiating with respect to x differentiating with respect to y, sine becomes cosine and we pull out the z, differentiating with respect to z, x sine goes to cosine and we pull out the y. So that's the gradient at a general point. We now need the gradient at this particular point, 1, 3, 0. Uh, because z is 0, this is going to greatly simplify. That will simply be 0 as will that, and that'll be 3. All right. That's it. So very easy. Then we have u, so we can just plug in. Let's do it over here. So let's just say du f at 1, 3, 0 is simply this dot product. And that, in turn, simply is minus 3 over the square root of 6. And that's the answer. And that's all you have to do. And again, Unless you're asked to, to compute the directional derivative by this means, you simply have to do this calculation, compute a gradient and do a dot product. It's that easy.